To build a QFD diagram, or a so-called QFD house of quality, you need to have already conducted a detailed correlation analysis. You can see that having already been done at the start of this scenario. Let's look. The marketing director at Lancaster Fleet realizes that correlation coefficients found in scenario one, okay, found earlier, could be used in a QFD diagram to assist further design of, okay, interesting patrol car onboard information systems. And then there's this great big table of data. What are these? These numbers are correlation coefficients. Oh, so before we go any further, Quick review, what's a correlation coefficient? It is a score, a number between negative one and one. What's it tell you? The strength of the linear relationship between any two sets of data. You say two sets of data. Yes, in the case of Lancaster Fleet, okay, to kind of catch you back up with that story, we have the customer scores on their products. That's one set of data. And we have their engineering scores um, on the this, this technical specifications for the same set of products. That's another set of data. Somebody has already calculated the correlation coefficients in each case. So. For our purposes here, this story picks up there. Now, there's more you can see. While engineering would consider coefficients as high as negative six or as low as, or as high as 0.6 or as low as negative 0.6 to be of some interest, the values would have to be at least 0.85 or negative 0.85 to be considered strong by that group. Okay, stop here. Yes, right, we should know what a correlation coefficient is supposed to mean in the first place. If the number is near one or negative one, the two extremes on the limits of its value, it's indicating either a strong positive or a strong negative correlation. But definitely it looks like for two sets of data there's some sort of relationship. The closer it is to zero, the center of the scale, the least likely these two things don't seem to be behaving together or related, at least in a linear sense, you know, in any fashion. We don't seem to have found a relationship. So you can calculate a correlation coefficient for any two sets of data. Now, what engineering is saying, and this is important to build our QFD diagram, a QFD diagram is basically a visual simplification of a more detailed correlation study, and they're indicating to us their comfort level for how we should simplify the data we've already been given. Because, let me get um, some kind of highlighting color here. They said that they felt, for instance, I'm looking at this, strong, at least 0.85 or negative 0.85. I'm looking at their data and I'm curious where, there's one, you see 0.998 right here. What is that? It's the correlation between helpfulness and the count on the click-throughs. That's what they would consider a very strong correlation. Likewise, right here, here's a very strong negative correlation. Since it's a little different, I'll put two boxes around it. Um, what is it? It's the relationship between helpfulness and autofill activity. So apparently the more autofill activity, the less helpful the system is perceived because the negative value tells us they work in opposite directions. Another one that qualifies as strong is over here because it's above 0.85. Okay, between helpfulness and use of color. Let's see, do I have everybody that's a strong? No, I don't. Look, I'm looking for ones that are above 0.85 or below negative 0.85. And here's another one, visibility and size of the screen. Oh, that sort of makes sense, right? The higher score you get for visibility, generally the larger the screen is on your system. All right, makes sense, strong positive. Now, that's what they said was strong. They're indicating that there's an intermediate uh, level, some interest, and that is between 0.6. It's like you didn't qualify for the 0.85 or above, but you are coming in above 0.6, or likewise coming in below negative 0.6. Who here fits that description? 
On the negative side, I see 0.66. That's more extreme than just 0.6. Of course, it's negative. I'll put like two bucks around it, uh, meaning they work in opposite directions. Here is some correlation, positive correlation of interest. Didn't quite hit 0.85. Here, it looks like point, yeah, we're below a negative 0.6 right here. It's negative. So I'll keep with my style, put two boxes around it. Does anybody else qualify as being of some interest? Oh, yes, right here. Bulkiness and the size of the desk area comes in above 0.6. Okay, now. We were just highlighting what they said of all of this detail was probably of some interest. They're also telling us something interesting. In addition, not all technical specifications are independent of one another, such as the size of the screen and the size of the desktop area. Now, these are the technical specifications across the top. These are how the engineers talk about the system. And what they're saying is, is that some of these relate to each other, particularly these two, right? And this would make sense. And if you read in the book the more detailed version of this, they actually give you a little bit more of a description. The larger the desktop area, the smaller the size of the screen has to be. Essentially, this is a computer system that's got to fit into the dashboard of a vehicle. So the larger you make one thing, the smaller you have to make something else. Okay. All right. This is just facts right now. We're just staging facts. What else? Earlier focus groups didn't reveal any preference for visibility, speed, helpfulness, or bulkiness. This is the customer's value features right here. And they're saying the customers didn't really have any strong preferences among them. All right, given this information, create a finished QFD house of quality model for the patrol car onboard information system. Ah, so that's actually the task. The only thing we were doing so far was just reviewing the information. If you've got the note frame, the so-called house of quality has been started for you. It's called a house of quality because yes, that's kind of pretty much exactly how it's shaped. This is the second page of the note frame. Oh, and this is a standard format. First off, Remember I said all QFD analysis begins with somebody has already done right a detailed correlation study so that you'd have this table of numbers that calculate the strength of the linear relationship. I'm just rehearsing correlation coefficient between each of the customer value features and each of the technical specifications. Standard format in the house of quality, the rows are the customer value features. And you can see here, just to save us some time, they've already been pre-printed. It's the same thing as on the page before. Visibility, speed, helpfulness, and bulkiness. Meaning the columns in the house are going to be the technical specifications. That hasn't been pre-printed, so yes, we do have to fill that in. All right, filling it in. What did they say? Let's see. I'm going to turn this for a moment so I can write fairly neatly. Size of screen was the first specification mentioned. Size of desktop, desktop area. That was the second specification. Let's see, use of color. That was the third. Click-throughs, count of click-throughs in the software. That was another technical specification. And autofill activity. Remember what they were doing is rating a variety of computer systems for how they rated according to these technical specifications. Now the only thing we did was we just added the labels. You might be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, this is that same set of labels as, well, this is where we started, right? Right here. The answer is yes. So you're thinking, oh, well then what are we gonna do? We're gonna copy these numbers right into here. This is the same table. And the answer is no, 
Not exactly. Actually, better than that. We don't have to copy everything from the original correlation study. We only have to copy what engineering indicated they thought was significant. Oh, but we're not even going to copy numbers, and that's nice. We just want a signaling system, strong positive correlation, some negative correlation. So we have to first appoint a code. Oh, oh okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a code. I'm going to say, all right, and this is you know pretty typical, a big solid dot. Let's let that be strong positive correlation. What's that mean? Look back on the page before. That means that you were at least 0.85 or below negative 0.85 versus an empty dot sum positive correlation, which means you at least hit 0.6 or negative 0.6, but you didn't make the 0.85 or negative 0.85. Okay, now wait, wait. I need a symbol for, how's this? Don't want it to mistake it for the other one. An X with a box around it. Strong negative correlation. When one is large, the other one tends to be small and vice versa. And then how about just a plain X doesn't have the frame around it for, again, not strong, but some negative correlation. Okay, now I have my legend, my symbols. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm just going to translate this. Because, for instance, we were remarking that the correlation between visibility, this top row, and the size of the screen, I'm reading it from the original data, it's 0.986. That is definitely what we would call strong, so I just put my symbol for that. Uh, and then likewise, helpfulness down here and use of color. Okay, that's this column right here. The original correlation is 0.884. That qualifies also as strong positive, so I put a dot. Then, um, let's see, right next door to it, helpfulness and the count on the click-throughs. Wow, 0.998, it doesn't get much stronger positive than that versus helpfulness and autofill activity was negative 0.967. That is strong, but it's negative correlation. I put that symbol. Okay, now what I'm doing as I'm making these symbols is I'm going back here. We did this one, this one, this one, and this one. We did basically the strong ones. Then what about the, you know, of some interest but not strong? Okay, bulkiness and the size of the desk area. Bulkiness is here, size of the desk area. An empty circle, there was some positive correlation. Versus visibility and use of color, there was some negative correlation. And speed in the count of click-throughs, there was some negative correlation. And speed and autofill activity, there was some positive correlation. There we go. Ah, we have just created the so-called relationship matrix in the house of quality. Okay, the square in the center of the house. Expressing the relationship between what customers notice and what we can actually change about a product. Now the house is not finished. The house is not finished because it obviously has a roof. You can see above here, what's that roof supposed to be? Okay, this type of study, this tool, you want to finish out your analysis, among other things, by asking yourself if there's any relationship between the technical specifications. Because in the future, see, you imagine yourself maybe changing some of those specifications to manipulate some of the customer's perceptions. So you want to know that if by changing one thing, maybe you inadvertently change something else. So is there any relationship between the specifications themselves? We'd have to review the data. 
And in this short scenario, they did say something about that. They said, in addition, not all technical specifications are independent. There we go. Okay, such as the size of the screen and the size of the desktop area. Those two things tend to fight. You make one larger, the other one has to be smaller because there's only so much room in the front of a car. Oh, okay, strong, negative, I'm making an assumption here because they didn't actually quote us a coefficient, but they bothered to mention it, so it must be significant. What would I do with that? That belongs in the roof. That's what these squares are up here. The size of the screen and the size of the desktop area. Take two spec technical specifications that are related to each other, trace them up, and then head at, turn towards each other. You'll notice that they are both caught in the center is that square right there. That is where we put the symbol for, oh, by the way, they didn't mention anything about any of the other technical specifications being related to each other. So the whole rest of the roof, so to speak, is blank. But in that one intersection between those two particular specifications, we do put a symbol, right, that's noting, oh, by the way, those two things do tend to fight. Okay, now are we done? Not quite. Almost done. I promise. Almost. One last feature. The QFD House of Quality also houses and expresses, when you glance at it, if your customers have any preferences among the value features, like some are more important than others, you know, you go, okay, well, it's like mostly filled out. Where does it go? It goes in that one column we haven't put anything in. See how we left a column blank right here? Yes. That is a column for expressing relative importance. of value features. Value. That's value, that word, features. Okay, relative importance of value features. We would want some way of expressing whether one of these things like visibility is more important than others. A typical way of doing that is having a 100 point scale and dividing up the 100 points among the value features, right? The ones that are more important get more points. Um, except in this particular scenario, it actually said earlier customer focus groups didn't reveal any preferences uh, among visibility, speed, helpfulness, or bulkiness. They said those four things are important, but they didn't reveal that any one of them was any more important than the other. Not a problem. We know what to do with that. That means that in this column here, we just want to put equal weights. So if we are using a scheme in which we divide up 100 points among them, they would each get the same amount. That's how we would express that, or 25, 25, 25, and 25. There, at that point, we've got the relationship matrix, we've got the roof filled in with anything, if there is anything to note between the technical specifications, and we've got the relative weights, we've got it. We've completed our so-called QFD house of quality diagram.